Welcome back to my grade 11 physics video tutorials. This video is going to be about scientific notation and a little bit on estimation. So, remember when you're watching these videos you can pause at any time and I recommend you pause whenever I have a calculation up for you to do. Try and do it before you watch how I do it and then compare. And if there's something wrong, you have to try to figure out why something is different. That helps you on the learning portion. So here we go. <clears throat> Scientific notation is a, a method we use to shorten how much we need to write and it also makes some calculations easier. If you've got a number like 32 billion or 32 trillion, that's a lot of zeros to have to write every time you write it in. It's easier if you can just shorten it down and expand it later if you need to. So here are the rules. If we've got a number that has a lot of zeros in it, a really small number or a really, really big number, what we do is we reduce it to a smaller version first rule is scientific notation has one non-zero digit before the decimal place all the other digits go after the decimal place <clears throat> that's obviously going to be a different number from what you had originally so what you have to do is find out how many times you have to multiply by 10 to make it equal to your number so if you have to multiply it by for example times 10 times 10 times 10 which is the same thing as saying times 10 to the power of 3 then that's what you're going to write and if it's a negative number, or if it's a, a decimal, less than zero, or less than one, you're going to write 10 to the negative something. I'll give you some examples of that. Let's try 32 billion, or 32 trillion. 32 trillion, if you wrote it normally, would look like this. 12 zeros. So what you're going to do, you're going to take one non-zero digit before the decimal place, so that's your three. And then you're going to put the only, whatever digits you need, in this case we'll just keep, keep the 2, after the decimal place. Obviously 3.2 is not 32 trillion. So what we have to do is say, what do we have to multiply that to get 32 trillion? Well, decimal places in between the 2 and the 3, you go 1, and then plus 3 is 4, 7, 10, 13. So we're going to multiply it by 10 powers of, or 13 powers of 10. And that is equal to the exact same thing. That's a much shorter number to write. Conversely, if we had a number like 0 0.0000000006, we do the same thing. We take that 6 and we put it before the decimal place. However zero, many zeros is significant, we'll talk about that in another video. And then we find out what could, we have to multiply it by. Well, in this case, we're multiplying 6 by, powers, by negative powers of 10, because we're dividing by 10. So to get that decimal to the, to the 6, we have to go 3, 6, 9, 10. So it's going to be times 10 to the power of negative 10. And that's how you do scientific notation. So some examples, and I believe these are on your, your handout. One astronomical unit is 149,000, 149,600,000,000 meters. Well, we're going to put a decimal place right there in between the 1 and the 4. So we're going to write 1.4 nine six times ten to the power of <clears throat> let's count two five eight eleven always keep the units here <clears throat> one mole of matter six hundred thousand billion billion i'll write that number up above six hundred thousand billion billion This is 10 to the 9 here, this is 10 to the 9 here, and then 600,000 would be 10 to the 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to write 6.0 times 10 to the power of, how many do we have? 9 plus 9 plus 3 plus 2, which will give us 14. Next one, Earth's mass, with a decimal place right there. 5.98, and that's going to be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. And then the negative one, electron charge. This is going to be 1.6 with a decimal place in between the 1 and the 6. And we get, to count that, we've got 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. So 10 to the power of negative 19. Because 1.6 has to be multiplied by that to be equal to this number up here. 
All right, next page. <clears throat> Some estimations. I'm going to skip the numbers at the top. I think those are the ones we just did. Yeah. So some estimation questions. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing that a lot of people don't realize is you can often use scientific notation, and this happens in other ways too, but you can use scientific notation to make calculations easier. Try these three values here, these four, four calculations without a calculator. By the way, before you do that, here's how you do scientific notation on a calculator. I can show you that in classroom if you're having trouble. But try these four calculations not using a calculator. You can do it on a piece of paper, however you want. Pause the video to do that. Okay, first one. Let's take the no calculators thing out of the way. So 3.5 times 10 to the 6 times 4.0 times 10 to the 8. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to group similar things together. So I'm going to say 3.5 times 4.0. And then I'm going to multiply that by 10 to the power of 6, 10 to the power of 8. Now, when you multiply exponents that have the same base, you just have to add the exponents. So this is going to become 10 to the 14th. 3.5 times 4.0, a lot of people don't realize 3.5 is the same as saying 3.5. So that's 3 times 4 plus a half times 4. Well, 3 times 4 is 12, and half of 4 is 2, so 12 and 2 is 14. So we're going to get 14 times 10 to the power of 14. However, this breaks the rule of scientific notation, which is you only have one digit before the decimal. So this should be 1.4. Well, we had to divide it by 10 to get 1.4, which means we have to multiply it by 10 again to make it the same. You multiply this by 10, you get 10 to the power of 15. <clears throat> if you got that, and if you're comfortable with it, continue. If not, pause, rewind, look it over again, try it yourself. Let's try the one to the right of that. 1.8. Oh, no, let's do the one underneath first. So C equals 6.0 times 10 to the 7, this, this one here. So I'm going to break this up for you. We have, there's, the, the nice thing about multiplication and division is it doesn't matter what order you do it in. If they're all happening at the same time, you can put them all together. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to group things that are similar. This time I'm doing it this way, because I know 6 divided by 3 is 2. 10 to the power of 7 divided by 10 to the power of 2, the rule with exponents, if you're dividing and it's the same base, you subtract the exponents. So we have 10 to the 5. 4.5 divided by 1.5, 45 divided by 15 is another way to look at that. That's 3. 15 times 3 is 45. So now we have 3, and then 10 to the 3, 10 to the 2, that's just another 10. You can go back to the way we did it before, pause it now if you haven't already done so, and figure this out the way we did the one above. That's going to give you 6.0 times 10 to the power of 6. Again, if you didn't get it, pause, rewind, look at it again. <clears throat> to the right, 1.8 times 10 to the 17 divided by 6.0. So 1.8 times 10 to the 17 I'm going to write this a little differently, 0 0.0 times 10 to the 4. Now, when you look at this one, it's not as obvious. 17 divided by, or 7, 10 to the 17 divided by 10 to the 4, that's going to be 10 to the 13. That's easy enough. And 1.8 divided by 6.0 is a little different. 1.8 divided by 6.0, the way I like to look at this is 6.0 divided by 10 is 0.6. And if I multiply that by 3, I get 1.8. So it's 3 tenths which is the same thing as saying 0 0.3. 0 0.3 times 10 to the power of 13. Now, we want to have a non-digit, non-zero digit on the left of the decimal, so we're going to go 3.0, and we had to multiply it by 10 to do that, so we have to divide it by 10 to make it equal to the same number. So it's 3.0 times 10 to the 12. Last one. Now this one, a little more tricky, I want to show you a little bit about estimation. These are quick ways of doing calculations. This last one, you can't easily do the calculations. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to take some of these numbers and I'm going to change them a bit. The, the powers of 10 we can still work with. But if you have 4, I'm going to call that, instead of 4.1, I'm just going to pretend it's 4. Um, 2.55 is going to become 2.5 times 3.5. 
Now I can estimate the, this even more. I can say 2.5 times 3.5. Well, actually, I can, I can just do it. 2 times 3.5 is going to be 7. And half of 3.5, so it's going to be 7.0, plus half of 3.5 is about 1 point, it's actually 1.75. Add those up, I get 8.75. And then I'm going to change that to 4. So I make this 4 over 8.75. Well, 4 over 8 is a half, so this is going to be a little less than half. I'm going to guess at 0 0.46. And it doesn't matter how close you are because you're always going to be able to check this with a calculator. So check it now with a calculator. But first, 10 to the 7 divided by 10 to the 2 divided by 10 to the 2 is going to be times 10 to the 3. If you didn't get that, check it. Right now, pause the video, try this out, and come back. Okay, so when I did the actual calculation with the calculator, I got 0 0.45. 9 times 10 to the power of 13, which is 4.59 times 10 to the power of 12. Okay, one last page. SI units and prefixes. We'll talk about this tomorrow in class, but I'm just going to fill the number, the values in for you. Distance, we're going to use the meter. Time, we're going to use the second. Mass, we're going to use the kilogram. Sometimes we can use the gram, but usually it's going to be kilograms. And these prefixes, nano, micro, milli, these are fast ways of representing SI notation when you have numbers that are bigger or smaller than the SI unit itself. Have a look at these and we can talk about them in the class. Thanks for watching.